Hey everybody, Pastor Zach here. Thanks so much for spending some time with me this morning, wherever this are, wherever this finds you. Um, if you are like we are in this area and getting a little bit of snow, a little bit of snowed in, um, I encourage you to, to take that time to see it as an opportunity to rest, to reflect, to um, find that time that feeds you. To find that opportunity that um, enlivens you to, to care for yourself, even for a few minutes, five minutes, for a half hour, um, and, and to be uplifted by it. Because today is Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras, Carnival, um, Fasnacht, however you want to call it. It is a day of, of celebration, of joy, and as a day of preparation for what comes next in the church. Tomorrow we begin... Uh, the Lenten season with Ash Wednesday. And um, I am sure, because I've already seen it, signs up about remembering that we are dust and to dust we shall return. It is a really powerful uh, time in the church when we have 40 days to reflect on what Jesus did for us, on the lengths that God went to for us, but also as a call for us to, to um, be pulled closer to God, but also to one another. And I think that's really important and central for our faith and our understanding. Um, and it was really interesting as I was scrolling through Facebook uh, a little bit ago, um, I was struck by someone's comments where they talk about how, you know, as adults, we can't communicate well. We yell, we scream, we demean, um, but we just can't have conversations with one another um we you know spout off we whatever um and and it was you know this notion of well you know that's that's the way it is and and the reality is it, it's not we can do better we can be better um just by taking small steps small increments of of having those uncomfortable conversations of stepping into that um, cone, that sphere of, of uncomfortability, of being willing to be vulnerable. Um, and, I, and I think today of all days, as we prepare for Lent, as we prepare for that, um, as we have some celebration, as we have donuts, if you can get there, or if you're making them at home, or if you're having those, you know, fun meals, um, how do we reflect on on all of that, but also on what it means to to be a little uncomfortable? Because I wonder what does it mean? You know, would you rather be uncomfortable for say a five minute conversation than to allow all of that to sit within you for days, weeks, months, and just build? You know, which and and often we'd say, well. We'd rather do that because that, you know, I don't have to confront anybody. I don't have, yeah, you know, but it doesn't do you or the other person or the group or the community any good either because it limits our ability to interact um, and and it challenges us. And, and I think that's it. You know, the, the season of Lent challenges us to to be more open to see the willingness of God, to see the vulnerability of God, to see um, this this notion of, you know, God sent his word made flesh to dwell among us, to be human, fully human, to experience that so that we may know we have a God who understands. And, and I wonder if if that impacts us differently, I wonder if that invites us to reflect, to maybe have a little bit more strength to step into those uncomfortable moments, to um, be willing to have some of those discussions that maybe we've put off, maybe we've said, you know, well, it's not important. Um, or that we perceive are not right to move forward. Um, 
you know, I... I have them just like everybody else, and, and part of my Lenten journey will be doing some of that, hopefully, this this Lenten season, um, and to be challenged by what it means for us to live into this notion of, of God at work in our lives, of us to find ways forward to proclaim um, a vulnerability and, and to be authentic. And I think it's so important for us to to lean into that now more than ever. Um, I think, you know, we keep seeing things in the world where we can't be vulnerable. We, we can't show that we have um, any doubt that we disagree, that we, um, with our beliefs, with our understandings, that, you know, all of this stuff. And, and yet... Faithfully, if we are called to live as Jesus calls us to live, we are called to do just the opposite. We are called to be vulnerable. We are called to be open. We are called to recognize that, you know what? We don't have all the answers. We're not perfect. Yeah, we've got scars. We've got baggage. And the church is not a perfect place. We're a community of people who struggle. And yet, through all of that, because of all of that, God calls us anyway to be in community, to serve one another, to care for the world around us, and to realize we do it imperfectly. And, and to support one another through that. I think the biggest gift that a church can have is to challenge each other and to be in conflict some because what I mean by that is it allows us to have conversations have challenging conversations and to to be open to hearing one another to listening with one another and to experiencing God in a new way um you know, the last last Sunday's gospel was the, the story of the transfiguration where Jesus goes up the mountain with a trusted few disciples. And, you know, God's voice comes from this cloud and it says, this is my son, my beloved, listen to him. And there's so much to unpack and we unpacked a little bit of it, a little bit on Sunday where we had Scout Sunday and a lot going on, um, which was awesome. So thank you to all of the scouts and the breakfast and, and all of that. But, but it's this notion of God sends a beloved, God sends a child to walk alongside. God doesn't send an enforcer. God doesn't send uh, an emperor or a ruler to come in with an iron fist and to demand allegiance. Jesus never demanded allegiance. Jesus invited people, encouraged people, challenged people. But Jesus never demanded that we follow. He showed that there would be examples or there could be examples of what happens without God. But yet, that, that openness, that willingness, that reaching out, that love is always there to be offered by God, to be encouraged by God, to be um, vulnerable with God. And, and I think for me, um, and I've said this before, that's why the, the passage of Micah 6, 8, he's an Old Testament prophet, um, is really impactful for me. And, and the work that I've done in and through it and continued to do is this notion of, um, you know, that passage says, and, and I'm paraphrasing with, with some of the work that I've done, but what does the Lord require of you? What does God call you to do? What does God impart on you, expect from you? But to seek restorative justice, you know, that which brings people, communities, families back together, to seek that. 
to practice faithful love. It is something that, that continually happens. It's something that continually is offered um, and continually grows through that process, even when challenged, and to walk in humbleness with God. To realize that we all have our uniqueness, our struggles, our joys, our challenges, and yet we have this God who walks with us. And I, and I think it's a reminder as we go through today, as we prepare for tomorrow, to think of what that means and how that can impact us through these next 40 days as we go through till Easter. And I know um, that was like this way big tangent. So if you guys have any questions, any comments, anything um, before we sign off today, please feel free to, to pop them in the chat or you can leave a message for me after if you don't watch this live. Um, but, but I encourage you to share this one today. Um, usually I ask that if it impacts you, but, but today I encourage you to share it. Uh, I also encourage you to, to have some of those uncomfortable conversations, even just one small one to start, um, and to, to be engaged with community, with supporting one another, um, with reaching out to someone who you may know is going through a challenging time, facing anxiety or worry or concern, um, not to fix them because you can't, but to walk with them. To say, you know what, you're not going through this alone. And to, to give those opportunities faithfully. If you are nearby, I encourage you to join with us tomorrow. We will be on site and online at 7 o'clock in the evening for worship. We do have um, two opportunities for drive through ashes tomorrow at our church. So it's from 8 to 9.30 and from 11.30 to 1. So if you are in our area, uh, we're across from Brecknock School. Uh, you know, if you're dropping kids off, picking kids up, if you want to swing over, um, you're, anyone is welcome to come and to hear those poignant and challenging words. Um, and if you are in a place that that um, isn't able, whether it's because of weather or just if you're struggling with something like that, reach out. And I will find a time that we can do something quickly here online, one on one together to remember um, our closeness with God and God's call for us and the challenge that we have to live imperfectly, but to seek justice, to faithfully love, and to walk in humbleness this day, always. Also, I encourage and invite you to join with us on Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.30 as we worship on site and online as we go through this Lenten season. Thanks, Patty, you too. Um, yeah, the truck came through once and now we can't see it anymore um so yeah if you're in our area where it's snowing stay safe stay home stay where you are if you can but i invite you let's have a conversation hope you guys have a great and blessed day join us tomorrow and we'll see you soon take care everybody god bless